Howdy, everybody. So today we're going to have a quick lecture on the space race. So while a lot of other parts of society are progressing, moving forward, you have the height of the Cold War, you have the women's movement, you have the civil rights movement, all this is going on. You also have the space race kind of running along the background of this as well. The big goal of the space race is to be the first nation to reach the moon. So really, this space race is kind of a surrogate. Not only is it pushing forward human progress, but it's a surrogate kind of step in for the Cold War. So Eisenhower kind of reluctantly begins the space race. So when the Russians launched Sputnik, and it was kind of an embarrassment for the United States, they beat us to the punch to have the first satellite orbiting Earth. Now keep in mind, Sputnik, when it went up in the air, all it did was beep. It didn't have anything else, but it scared us because if they could put a satellite up there, what else could they do? So Eisenhower reluctantly creates NASA, puts the funding and organization together to compete with the Russian Space Service. So here's Sputnik, kind of the first big Russian leap forward ahead of us. So not much of anything, not even that big of a satellite, but nonetheless, the satellite flew around and we could tune into the right frequency and we could hear it beeping. And every time we heard those beeps, we knew we were losing the space race. And it gets worse. Yuri Gagarin becomes the first man in space in 1961. So this is just a huge embarrassment for the United States. Now we try hard to catch up. Alan Shepard becomes the first American in space when he briefly exits the atmosphere. Now, what's really going to change and drive America forward in our space race is a pledge that John F. Kennedy makes. He says before the decade is out, before we hit the 1970s, we're going to put a man on the moon. Now, keep in mind, we had just gotten to space. Like, we had just left the atmosphere. And he's like, not only are we going to go to space and orbit the Earth and do all these cool things, by God, we're going to go to the moon. So this is a tall order. So he said this in 1961. He said by the end of the decade, by 1969, we're going to be on the moon. So this starts the Apollo program. Get a man to the moon. So in 1962, John Glenn became the first man to orbit the Earth. He returns to Earth and has a ticker tape parade, people celebrating him, as they do with many astronauts as national heroes. So this is something unique at the time. Astronauts today were kind of like, oh, cool, an astronaut. At this point in time, they were truly national heroes. Everyone really kind of looked up to them and deified them. So here's JFK looking in one of the Apollo kind of capsules. Now on December 1968, the Apollo 8 crew rode the Saturn V rocket into space and did something no astronaut or no human had ever done before, they broke free from the orbit of the Earth. Now keep in mind, this is a thoroughly terrifying thing. As long as you're in orbit of the Earth, the, Earth, the Earth's gravitational pull is trying to pull you back down to Earth. So you're going to probably be okay as long as you can make re-entry okay. When you break from Earth's gravitational pull, and you enter effectively deep space where no gravity is effectively working on you, your math better be really good in order for you to get back, particularly with the kind of technology and rockets they're running. So your kind of big calculator or your smartphone today is more powerful than the computer running their spaceship. So they're doing this with bailing wire and duct tape in a lot of cases. But they make this big trip, and they make it all the way from the Earth out to the moon. They orbit the moon and come back. Now what they're doing is they can only take so much fuel with them. So they use the Earth, they orbit the Earth once, and they use the momentum built up from orbiting the Earth to basically fire their rockets at just the right moment to slingshot themselves, basically use Earth's gravitational pull as kind of a like lever to throw them towards the moon. That means the moon 
has to be at the exact right point whenever they're flying by to catch them. Because if they're just off by a little bit, they'll miss the moon, miss its gravitational pull, and they're just off in deep space. So this was a lot of good math, a lot of good science going into getting these guys to orbit the moon and get them back. So this was a big, big deal. The question remained, could we land on the moon? And this is on July 16th, 1969, the Columbia is gonna take off from Cape Kennedy, Florida for a 286,000 mile journey to the moon. So on board, you had Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins. They made the two and a half orbits of the Earth, used that to fling themselves towards the moon, and make the three-day journey there. Now, as they neared the moon, Neil and Buzz boarded a small craft called the Eagle. And this is the Eagle Lander. So this is where we get the phrase, the Eagle has landed. So they land on the moon. And you get that famous quote, you know, small step for man, giant leap for mankind. And Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong being the first, walk on the moon for the very first time. Now imagine being Mike Collins. You make it all the way to the moon and you have to stay on the ship while two other guys walk. Like, it had to be somewhat bittersweet. But nonetheless, he did it because he needed someone on the ship to make sure they could pick him back up. Now what's even more crazy is they were able to show this relatively live. There's some delay of the image, but relatively live on TV. 723 million people worldwide stopped and watched. That's one fifth of the Earth's population. So 20%, one fifth of the whole world stopped doing something to watch these guys land on the moon. This was a big deal. So they walked on the moon, they took samples, they did a lot of different things. Now to put this in kind of perspective, in 1903, the Wright brothers proved that men and people could fly, that mankind could fly. Only 66 years later, we put a man on the moon. This is an impressive change over time. Now I'll put a link to a cool movie in our Blackboard site, but this is an impressive feat nonetheless. So in less than a decade, we went from barely leaving Earth to putting a man on the moon. In 66 years, we went from learning how to fly for the first time to putting a man on the moon. This is no small scientific and human endeavor. So we'll stop there for today and we'll pick up with another lecture next time.